Hi, my name's Dan, and today we have the Bookstack August release for 2023. Now there is an upgrade notice for this release and that is a security notice, specifically around webhooks. If you have a system that has Bookstack on it and that Bookstack instance could possibly have admin level users that may not be trusted, then please read our upgrade notice for this since we've added controls to prevent possible exploits using webhooks and server side requests. Otherwise, let's jump into our main feature of this release, which is content notifications. So these are notifications that are sent by email upon certain page level activity within the system, such as page updating, creation, or commenting. So to provide some global user level controls, we have some new user preferences, which we can access via going to our user profile menu in the header bar, and then preferences, and then notification preferences. If we manage those, we can come into this new view. And down the bottom here, we've got some watch and ignored items, which we'll come on to in a moment. But if we look towards the top, there's three new checkbox items. So we have notify upon changes to pages that I own, notify upon comments to pages that I own, and notify upon replies to my comments. So these won't be checked by default, just to make sure you don't get notifications that you're not expecting after upgrading. But you can come in here and select these to start getting notified when people interact with your content. So I'll select those and I'll save my preferences. But upon these global defaults, as the section down here alluded to, we can set watch preferences at an item level basis. So if I jump over to my books and then I'll go to this admin planning book, then down the right hand side, we have this watch option within the actions. So we can select watch to start watching this page. And we get this section up here in the details to say, hey, we're watching for new pages and updates. And that's what we get by default when we watch an item. But if we click this, we get a whole bunch of different options that we can select. So for example, we can choose to ignore all notifications. So that will override our user defaults as well. And means that upon any of those actions that we were supposed to get notifications for, we won't, which is particularly useful if there's a really active, noisy book or bit of content that you don't want to watch. Then we can watch for just new pages, or we can watch for all new pages and page updates, or we can go even further and watch for all new pages, page updates, and new comments. And because we're controlling things at the book level here, that's going to apply to all pages within this book and within all chapters that are within this book. And you can set these watch preferences at a book, a chapter, or a page level basis. And like with permissions, things will cascade downwards and apply to everything below it, unless that has its own permissions set upon it. So if there are watch options set on a page that takes priority, then it look up to the chapter and then it'll look up to the book. Otherwise, if nothing has specific watch preferences set, it's going to just use your default user notification preferences that we just saw. But in this example, I'm going to choose to watch all page updates and comments. And there we go. Our preference has been updated and we can see this little status in the details has updated to say we're watching new pages, updates and comments. And if we go down a level, for example, into this page, um, because we have a watch preference set on the parent book, that is reflected here as well. So saying we're watching via parent book, and we can choose to select that and set a page level preference as well. But let's do an example of what a notification looks like. So I have a different tab, which is this one here, where I'm logged in as a different user. And I'm going to go down because this is the admin planning book that I just watched as the admin user. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to add a new comment. So I'm going to save my comment. And now that's added and that should notify the admin user who we just watched this book as. So I've jumped over to MailTrap, which I'm using to capture email sent by my demo instance. And I've got a new email in here. So I'll click on that. You can see we've got a subject of new comment on page, and that's the name of the page, truncated to make sure any massive uh, pages don't make your subject line go wild. And then we can see this rather simple notification email saying a user has commented on a page in Bookstack, then it has the page name, who the commenter was, and the comment text itself. And then we've got a button here so we can click on that and jump through to go and see that comment. Now, something to note is that notifications for page updates are somewhat debounced. And by this, I mean that if a very eager editor was updating a page and then was updating it many times in a very short time period, then you'll only get one notification at their first save within that session. So Bookstack will only notify on a page update if it hasn't already recently been updated by that same user 
just to prevent a flurry of notifications flooding people's inboxes. And this is something that's mentioned on those notifications when they're sent. So users are made aware of this behavior. And another thing to note about this whole notification system is that by default will only be provided by users of the default admin role upon upgrade to this version of Bookstack. And access to this functionality is controlled by a new role level system permission. So I'm looking at system permissions here and down the bottom we have receive and manage notifications. So if I wanna give this role the ability to do everything that I've shown so far, I can select this and then just save their role and they'll now have the ability to receive and manage notifications. And this is something that was done to provide admins control over who can have this functionality while also providing that stable upgrade path so we're not hindering environments that might not want to use this feature in Bookstack. And finally, there are some things to think about when it comes to performance of these emails being sent. Because sending out these emails when these certain activities take place does have a performance penalty, especially if you're starting to send to a lot of different people. And there is a solution for this. It just requires a little bit of setup on the host side of your Bookstack instance. If you go to the email and webhooks part of our documentation and then async action handling, there's a section here that details the setup process to run a queue worker, which means that these emails and other things like webhooks can be done in the background rather than slowing down these certain activity events within the system. As the next feature, I want to talk about an added safety net for drawings. So as a bit of a demo, I'll go and edit this draw. And let's just change some of the colors. And there we go, we've made this really cool drawing. But before I save it, I'm gonna do one thing. I'm gonna go up here and select work offline. And the idea of this is to simulate maybe a failed connection or something going wrong in the save process. So I've got this pop up here, but I'm gonna ignore this. I'm gonna dismiss this. I'm gonna to choose to save my drawing. As we can see, we've got an error when we did that and our drawing has not updated. So previously in Bookstack, when you encountered one of these scenarios, you could end up losing those changes to your drawing. And sometimes this could mean hours of lost work. But in this version of Bookstack, we've added a little bit of a safety net. So now when you choose to save a drawing before it's uploaded to Bookstack, it'll be saved into the browser itself so that we have a backup before we then try and send it off to Bookstack. If it gets sent to Bookstack and it's saved successfully, then everything's good and then the version within the browser gets removed. But if there's a failure detected in that process at all, the version within the browser will remain for potential restore, which I'll show you now. So if I go back online, and I'll dismiss this error message, but now I'll go back and look to edit this drawing, so double click it, and we get this new pop-up. So it said, unsaved drawing data was found from a previous failed drawing save attempt. Would you like to restore and continue editing this unsaved drawing? So I'll click continue. And here we have our edited version with our nice colors. So now that we've got that, I can then hit save. And because we're back online, everything's gone through and our drawing has been updated. So yeah, a relatively minor thing, but should help avoid some quite painful scenarios that some people have come across. Now for a REST API update, a few of the endpoints, specifically chapters update and create and page create and update, can now accept a new parameter and that's the priority parameter, which takes an integer as shown in this example request. And this parameter allows you to manage the ordering within a book. So within a book, items are ordered from lowest priority to highest priority. So now by being able to provide this when you create or update content, you can manage the ordering of a book by the API. And a shout out to Rue, sorry for the pronunciation, for providing the pull request to get this feature into Bookstack. Next up, I wanna talk about a new security setting. So this is the allowed SSR hosts option, and this relates to the security advisory that I mentioned at the start of the video. This new setting allows system administrators to effectively set an allow list for hosts that can be called out from the Bookstack instance for what is typically trusted so like admin level systems. So specifically in this case, it only really applies to webhooks, but it could be used for other functionality in Bookstack in the future. And this setting as shown in the examples here do allow things like wildcards or to provide multiple values. So as an example, I've just added this to my config for the instance that I'm using for this demo. So I've added the option allowed SSR hosts and set that to only HTTPS example.com. And within my instance, I have this webhook here that is specifically for recycle bin events and calls up to webhook.site, which doesn't pass that allow our list and I'll trigger this webhook by doing a recycle bin event and now if I refresh this webhook we can see that this was called but it also errored out when it was called with an error message the URL does not match the allowed SSR host so it prevented the webhook from firing up and instead it logged an error message to say that the URL wasn't allowed. 
Now with the release, as usual, comes a whole massive load of new translation updates by our amazing team of translators. So again, this list here shows everyone that's provided translations since the last feature release. And I've even started showing the amount of words they've translated just because it's often quite an incredible amount, like there's thousands there. And then many people providing hundreds of word translations. And many of these in the hundreds, I'm seeing repeat names that come up almost every release. So a massive, massive thank you to people that are putting their free time and efforts into this. It's absolutely wonderful. Thank you. And that's pretty much it in terms of new features to talk about in this release. In terms of the next release, I kind of really want to put my head down and do a clean up and tidy up release. There's a few messy corners of the system and there's a few things that I don't think is very intuitive, especially around the new kind of profile and user preferences and how that relates to how you edit your profile and where things exist. I think with all the additions over time, things are a bit fragmented. I want to make it much more intuitive to users. So I'll probably be spending some time here as well as picking up other little bits that are strewn across the user interface and within the code base itself, just to make sure things are kept up to a level of standard that I'm generally happy with. And then thinking a level beyond there, I'm thinking back to comments and then continuing some of the recent work we've done there. There's just an example. One thing that's not very obvious is that you can do some formatting within comments via Markdown, but I don't think this is very intuitive for a kind of user base that we're targeted at. So what I'm thinking is possibly having a kind of stripped down WYSIWYG editor, not at the level of the pages, but a reduced version of that to allow simple formatting that we can then use in the area of comments and then potentially other bits of the system as well, such as description boxes for books and chapters and things like that because there has been some previous requests to at least maybe get links and some simple formatting for the descriptions of content. But again, that will be a later release. But that just about covers everything that I've got to share for this one. So I hope you enjoy the new features and I hope your upgrade goes well. But otherwise, have a wonderful day.